global strategies. Initial dialogue. We are here to discuss how we're going to sell our body oil in overseas markets. Any ideas? We can always export from our Indian facility and use local distributors. How about licensing our formula to local companies and have them manufacture and sell it? Or better yet, we could build our own local manufacturing facilities and sell it through local channels. These are all interesting possibilities. However, we first need to decide where we are going, how we are going to get in, and who we are going to work with. Isn't it obvious? We're going to Europe, right? Which countries in Europe, Sherry? All of them, of course. But are all of them the same in terms of market potential? Hmm. I never really thought of it that way. And you, Aki, what do you think is the best way to enter? Export, license, or direct foreign investment? That's a good question. Let's think about it some more and get back together later this week. MBA Lecture Global Strategies When companies decide to expand to markets outside their own country, they need to address two key questions Which market should we enter? And how should we enter those markets in terms of our physical presence and marketing mix? Choosing Markets When deciding on which markets, countries, to enter, the following should be considered market potential, demographics, lifestyle, and national income. Competitive advantage, both domestic and foreign. Risk, financial and political. Many companies will initially expand to markets near their own. This is called geographical proximity. This may allow companies to better control cost. At other times, markets may be chosen based upon shared or similar cultures, values. This is called psychic proximity. This may allow companies to sell their products more easily. You see both of these strategies with Canada and the US, and, to a lesser degree, with China and Japan. Entry strategies. When deciding on how to enter new markets, companies will use one of three approaches exporting, trading company, licensing, joint venture, local partner, direct investment, foreign subsidiary. The first two approaches limit a company's risk, financial exposure. But control is mainly in the hands of a third party. Choosing the right partner can mean the difference between success and failure. Direct investment is usually seen as the final step in the process, but only if the market potential is strong enough to justify it. Japanese car companies started out exporting to the US in the 1960s and 70s, before deciding to set up their own factories in the 1980s once the market demand was established. Adaptation strategies. In order for a product to be successfully sold in a foreign market, some adaptation of the marketing mix, product, place, price, and promotion may be necessary. This may be as minor as placing local language labeling, packaging on the product, or it could require some major alteration of the product, such as moving the steering wheel on a car to the left side or adjusting the dosage of medicine to fit local government requirements. Many companies have failed in their overseas efforts due to their unwillingness or inability to make the necessary adaptations. Global Strategies Application Dialogue What do you think our global strategy should be? Based on my research, we should focus on Northern European countries first, since they offer the greatest market potential at this time. I agree. I also think we should work with a strong local partner in the personal care industry, someone with good connections and a solid reputation. So, are you suggesting we export or license our product? Sure, why not? But by doing this, won't we be giving up control of our product and the opportunity to establish our own brand name? Well, what other choices do we have except for building our own local facility and distribution network? And that would be very expensive. I was thinking about establishing a marketing joint venture where we maintain control. The question then becomes with whom? What about our entry strategies? You do realize we may need to adapt or modify our product to meet local regulations. Our prices may have to be adjusted for this. 
That's true. We may also need to adapt our advertising to local cultural standards. And finally, we may need to adapt our distribution, since specialty personal care stores are very popular in Europe. So what we're really saying is that we have to think globally but act locally. Synergy diversification. Initial dialogue. I asked you to join me today to discuss our corporate strategy. Gee, that's a lot to cover, isn't it? I will be more specific. We have achieved a great marketing success with our Maharaja Magic. We are number one in Japan and Asia. We have the most cost-efficient manufacturing facility in India. We have a very aggressive marketing joint venture in Europe. We will be addressing the U.S. market in the coming weeks. In short, we have initiated our global expansion and established a sustainable competitive advantage. That's not too bad. You are right, but we have one fundamental weakness. We are dependent on only one product line. Exactly. What do you want us to do? Find something else to do? Yes and no. I'm talking about diversification, which will give us a clear synergy to our Maharaja Magic business. I have an idea. We can move into the Indian restaurant business, especially since Japanese enjoy Indian food. That's pretty far out. What does Indian food have to do with bath oil? Well, they are both exotic Indian products. We can position ourselves as the ultimate Indian lifestyle provider. Why not add Indian movies too? All right, all right. I would like to give you some time to think about this. But when you do, always remember to check your ideas against the three criteria of diversification strategy. Oh. MBA lecture synergy diversification. When companies decide to diversify, entering new markets outside their core area, they need to consider three things: market attractiveness, cost of entry, and synergy effect. Market attractiveness. In order to ascertain this, we have to look at the five forces model that was discussed in section 13. Using it, we examine the relative relationships and strengths of suppliers, customers, new entrants, substitute products, and existing competition. In an industry where the cumulative effect of these forces is strong, profit potential would be low. However, if the opposite is true, then the industry has potentially high profits. As an attractive one, cost of entry、It、is important that a company consider all the costs associated with entering a new industry. This includes the initial startup costs as well as the first year's working capital, operating losses. The ironic thing is that industries that may be considered attractive will have high entry costs, and those that are not attractive will have relatively low entry costs. There is obviously a correlation between the two. Synergy effect. One plus one equals three. The idea here is whether diversification makes the company stronger. To answer that, we need to address the idea of synergy, which is the compatibility with the core business. Many companies diversify into areas that have very little to do with their main business. As a result, they are unable to share resources or transfer existing knowledge or skills between their core business and their new business. The best diversification is the kind that allows a company to do both. This will allow it to reduce costs and improve efficiencies. Diversification methods. There are basically two ways for a company to diversify. First, it can be done organically, internally, using the company's existing resources. This allows for greater control, but tends to be more costly and time-consuming. The other way is to acquire an outside company who is already in that industry. This method tends to provide more immediate results, but may lead to integration issues with conflicting corporate cultures. Synergy diversification, application dialogue. Well, have you thought about your diversification strategy? I checked my idea of starting an Indian restaurant business. Against the three criteria, I think I'm failing on all three accounts. 
I am glad you came to your senses. All right. What's your idea, Keiko? I think we should add a soap line. I'm thinking of a type of soap product that is very gentle to the skin and enhances the medicinal effect of our body oil. All right. Let's check your idea against the three diversification criteria. Yes. Once we position our soap, like I said, there will not be much competition. You will be amazed how many women are having skin problems due to allergy, house dust, building materials, etc. They need an effective, gentle soap. And oil. The compatibility is obvious. Our soap will work best with our oil. We do have the necessary marketing and logistical capabilities within our organization. We can share these existing activities with the new ones. How about the cost of entry? We have the basic R&D and manufacturing capabilities. I am talking about transfer of skills and shared activities here. Wow, I'm impressed. That's not all. I'm toying with the idea of adding a chain of aesthetic salons to distribute and promote our products. Hmm, sounds interesting. Why don't you work up a detailed proposal with your team and get back to me ASAP? Sure will, Mr. Bryant.